Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello, nerds. You're listening to an episode on the Nerdcore podcast feed. If you're feeling generous, please consider pledging to a tier on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nerdcore. We have tiers as low as $1 per month. Thanks so much, and enjoy the episode. episode 13 yes the big one three we have made it this far thank you to all my listeners out there all those recently tuning in i appreciate it now let's get right down to business in this episode we are going to be covering the theory of quantum immortality yes we are going down that rabbit hole everyone if you've listened previously to my glitch in the matrix episode you know what's coming first i'll tell you exactly what quantum immortality is about And then we'll go into some stories. How about that? Anyways, quantum immortality is the process that when you die, your consciousness theoretically transfers over to another copy of you in an alternate slash parallel universe that didn't die in that particular instance. It's an interesting think piece. Many people call it a thinking exercise. Others actually truly believe in this. I want to bring up what led me to quantum immortality, though. The story that involves the will of parallel dimensions that you see after you die slash before you come back. And this comes from actually the Near Death Experience Research Foundation. Yes, that is an actual website, nderf.org. And if you'd like to find this particular story I'm about to tell you, Wilson, FDE, you can find it at nderf.org slash experiences slash one Wilson underscore FDE dot HTML. And let's get into the experience description, as it says. A friend persuaded me to submit this account. Against my natural tendency on that on the matter, I have no real interest in following it up or being contacted in any way. It was a very frightening episode. It is traumatic enough, to be honest, to recall it just once at length here. But having set out to describe it, I will be as frank and as accurate as language can allow. On the 15th of July, 2013, at about 7.45 a.m., I was on my way to work and approaching the intersection and getting ready to take a left-hand turn. This is a notoriously dangerous intersection on any day. There have been many accidents there. It is hard to see. The intersection is clear from the right and the left turn is particularly hazardous. I was running late and in a flustered state of mind, I had an important meeting that I had been planning for carefully over a number of days and a really stupid delay at the last minute put all of that in jeopardy. It should also be understood that a much better traffic signal system exists there today than was in place at the time of this accident. I approached the intersection in a hurry. I looked to the right and believed that I had correctly viewed that nothing was approaching from the right, so I made the left turn. As I crossed the intersection, I glanced right once more and saw a vehicle heading straight for me at what could have only been in excess of 90 miles per hour. We saw each other. I saw the look in the other guy's eyes because we were that close. The collision was absolutely inevitable. There is no way on this earth that it could have been avoided. What happens next is extremely difficult to describe, but I will do my best. And this can be and must be taken to apply to everything that I'm going to attempt to relate from this point onwards. Words, even the most carefully chosen words, capture no more than 1% of this experience at best, and even then very poorly. This is quite possibly the most frustrating thing about giving this account. Across from the front of the car on the left, in almost the opposite direction to the oncoming vehicle, was a field. I suddenly became aware of a very large object approaching slowly on a diagonal across this field. It was coming directly towards my car. Time was not functioning normally while this was happening if it was functioning at all. I had the space to notice this happening, but I can't explain how I was able to do that. The object when I first saw it appeared to be about the size of a 10-floor tower block. That's right, a 10-floor tower block, so this thing's huge. 
It subjectively seemed to be about two or 300 yards across the field. These sizes and distance descriptions are meaningless, as I'll try to explain in a moment. The object resembled a giant water wheel lying on its side and rotating as if approached me and my vehicle. As I clock closer, this didn't take time as we understand it. I saw that my first observation about its size was wildly inaccurate. It was more like the size of a small city. As it got closer still, I understood that all scale and distance estimates were meaningless. It was larger than what we think of as the world. As it approached me, I became aware of its power and significance. My mind interpreted this as being an up-close, giant-scale physical object. Okay, now this part is particularly difficult to explain. As the object drew near to me, kind of a kind of sensation came over my person. I knew exactly what this thing was. Not only that, but I knew everything that pertained to it. What it was, what it was doing, what its business was with me, where and when I had seen it before, why I was seeing it now, and many, many other things that I cannot now recall. <coughs> Excuse me. I had seen the object before I was born, and I will see it, and I will see it again when I die. We all knew it before we were born. We all see it when we die, but this information is clips from us while we are alive. And that was why I was seeing it now in the experience, because I was in the process of dying in a fatal car crash. Here's what I can remember, as best as words can tell. This will wasn't something that moved towards me through the world or through reality somehow. That was an illusion that my senses were constructing for me. The will was reality itself. It represented every conceivable possibility for a life or for a world that could ever be envisioned or imagined. As I approached, I became aware that what we call our world was contained within it. It was simply one of the numberless slots or paddles in the water wheel. It had always been so. My life, your life, our world, all of us. We were a part of this wheel structure. We had always been a part of this structure. It simply now made itself visible to me. There then began the truly terrifying dimension of this experience. Words cannot even begin to describe the level of fear I experienced. The water wheel sort of rolled across me and then across the place where my car was in the road. As it did so, I began to be hit by each of the paddles in the wheel. Remember that all of this is just a way of talking and does not and cannot remotely describe the real situation as it actually was. But some sense of it can be had by imagining that in the space of each paddle, there was a kind of spinning film of water, like a waterfall on its side. Imagine a film of water being thrown outward from the wheel in each slot as if by centrifugal force. Imagine being slapped or splashed by each of these films as you collide with it and pass through it by the next one. This is what was happening, except these weren't just films of water. They were, for one of a better term, possible realities or what we might think of as universes or worlds. Again, our world, our entire universe as we normally think of it, was simply one among an infinite number of these. How did I know that there was an infinite number? I just did. A kind of knowing came with this event, and there was no doubting this knowing. It was so, and I knew it was so. And because I had knowledge and understood what was happening in ways I could no longer communicate, I was afraid. I understood that I was about to be subject to the process that humans approximated with the term reincarnation. This was why the will had come. I represented a kind of discrepancy that had to be fixed. The event, or perhaps the imminent event on the highway, had caused me to slip out of or fall between the paddles on the wheel. This structure had some kind of cosmic purpose of sorting things into their correct natural place. I was afraid and resisted being sorted. So the wheel stepped up its aggressive attempts to sort me correctly. With this came another understanding that frightened me even more. I knew that unless I soon selected one of these realities to slide back into, that the will would coerce the situation by deciding for me. One way or another, I would be sorted, whether I liked it or not. If I didn't choose for myself, I would simply be fitted into place at some nearest position on the will to the point where I failed to make this decision, if that makes sense. I was aware of having a limited ability to choose, but not much. Even that limited ability wasn't much use because each rea reality slammed against me and threw me before I could make much sense of what it contained. Even I did not remain the same from one slot in the will to the next. It was as if when each film broke over me, I was destroyed and made again from the ground up as a completely new self. There was no continuous me that traveled unaltered through that will and can somehow report back on this experience. This is just one of the many things that is so very hard to explain. The very idea of a continuous self was contradicted by this experience. I have forgotten, and perhaps it was deliberately suppressed, the vast majority of what I saw in the various universes or paddles of the will. At the beginning, they seemed very similar to this world we inhabit. 
or believe ourselves to inhabit. For example, I have a floating memory of seeing various different scenarios of how the accident played out. I suspect that these were all nearby paddles on the wheel. In one of them, I remember seeing what looked like my vehicle thrown right off the road and so badly damaged that it looked like it had been folded in the center like a pocket knife. I seem to recall many other scenarios like this that I can no longer remember. To clarify, what I mean is that I seem to file or flip through numerous conceivable quantum question mark, possibilities for the outcome of the accident. I can remember doing this, but I cannot remember what any of these particular worlds contained. I have no explanation for why I failed to experience any of the phenomena usually reported with imminent death situations like the tunnel, the light, and so on. I suspect that imminent death experiences are symbolic scenarios that flash up just as someone is entering or exiting the will, but before the situation has developed very far. At no stage did I see anything, whatever, that resembled what we humans would think of as an afterlife or spirit world or life after death realm. It's as if we are either on the outer surface of the will itself in one of its realized worlds, or else we are dead and we are the will itself. The will is a space where all uncreated possibilities exist, but nothing completed or actual. And bear in mind that nothing was concealed from me. It was the all. I knew the all. I certainly don't retain it or pretend to, but I knew it then. I began to grow extremely panicked. Each time I thought I was just beginning to get a handle on things, I would be slapped over violently and ruthlessly into a new slot in the will, and a whole new me would crystallize, along with all the memories and assumptions that went along with that world. I remembered none of who I was just a moment ago in another paddle on the wheel. I had no memory whatsoever of where I had come from or the highway situation in my world. I had zero memory of that world. I knew I had come from a somewhere, but I had no recollection, words, they're hard, of where that was or even who I was. It was about the most bizarre thing that you could imagine. Somehow, though, and I can only assume that it happened without any conscious action on my part, the possibilities appearing in the will began to narrow down and become somewhat more familiar again. Scenarios associated with the accident began to appear once more. I say once more, but I have no real way of knowing whether this was a separate incidence of this to what I described above, or whether it was really the same incidence because time was functioning so unusually during the whole episode. Again, I saw or seemed to see variations or possible world outcomes where I died in the crash. I seemed to understand intuitively that if I went into any of these, I would be there for only a few moments or minutes at most, and then I would have to come out and face the wheel again almost immediately. I didn't want to do this, but there was an odd kind of knowing associated with that too. The wheel didn't seem bothered one way or the other. It didn't seem to matter to it whether I merged again in three minutes' time or three decades' time. All it cared about was sorting me, and there was a kind of ruthlessness to this that I would not soon forget. I found myself back on the highway, in what seemed to be a very short distance back up the road. Still approaching the intersection, this is just one of the many mysteries associated with the event that I cannot explain. Did I choose a world which was a version of our universe in which the accident hadn't quite happened yet, but was just seconds away from happening? I can't say, because I have no memory of making that decision. I remember the look on that driver's face as clearly as if it were yesterday. I remember him bracing back on the wheel, but I braked as I reached the intersection, and that driver and his car were simply nowhere to be seen. All right. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I give you all that to process. Again, again, I'll, I'll give you the side if you want to read this versus hearing my voice tell you this, or just go back and play from about zero zero from zero zero to. 12 minutes, 50 seconds, uh, that'll tell you everything you need to know. But again, the website is nderf.org slash experience slash experiences slash one Wilson underscore FDE dot HTML. Uh, again, it's, it's a pretty cool story. Um, is it true? Who knows? Who am I to dictate whether this actually happened or not? I think it's really neat and actually a really good thinking exercise to try and wrap your mind around something of this sort. Now, to continue on, we'll go into some stories, uh, a quantum immortality, uh, just two short ones, because I know I know that story was big long, and that's enough to kind of digest, but this will give you some more ideas of, uh, yeah, quantum immortality. So this is posted by you slash SWERC1234 about a year ago. 
It is in the R Glitch in the Matrix subreddit. Again, that's r slash glitch underscore n underscore the underscore matrix. And this story is called, I Remember Dying, But It Never Happened? Question mark. Yesterday, my family and I took out our boat. My father had just bought a new tube for it, and my sister and I were taking turns tubing it, as it was a one-person tube. My, ma- my father has a bit of a drinking problem, and was, to the best of my knowledge, really drunk by the afternoon. But I decided it would be fun, and I got on the tube anyways. I remember him ripping me around only to see another boat coming at me. After that, everything goes black. I woke up today in my bed, being shocked that I was not in a hospital or injured at all. I already suffered from mild anxiety, but it's safe to say I had a full-on panic attack this morning. This is not right. No one has said anything about an accident or why I'm here. I'm not supposed to be here. What is going on? And some are going head concussion nightmares all of these per- particularly make sense uh others called out quantum immortality but that, that's just an example of you know what happens with quantum immortality is if you die you basically just get put into a different reality where you don't die and our next story and our last story because that first story took so long but i really like I really like the Wheel of Parallel Dimensions. I think that's really neat. But this next story comes to us also in the Glitch in the Matrix subreddit. U slash dash space penguin. I love that name. Two years ago, this one is called Time Refraction. Hello, guys. It's me again. I guess I just happen to experience glitches in the Matrix almost every time I hit the slopes. So here it goes. So this is a skiing story if you haven't gathered on. I was skiing last week with my friend who's a snowboarder, and we were the last people on one of the lifts as the operators had informed everyone that they were closing it due to high winds at the top. I told my friend I'd meet him at the bottom since I like to try to go super fast on open trails. He likes to go slower and carve. We were dropping in off a pretty steep steep bowl, and I figured, hell, there's no one here. I'm going to bomb a little bit, and I went fast towards the tree line. Here's where it starts getting strange. As I approached the trees, the snow had gone super choppy. I felt myself losing control of my skis. My right leg caught an ice chunk, and the last thing I remember was hitting a rather large tree straight on. Very oddly, I didn't feel any excruciating pain, as hitting a tree that fast would have broken most of my bones if not killed me instantly. People die all the time from much more mellow collisions. I remember only being able to see a soft white glow, and the air around me seemed to be humming with electricity. The white light faded to black, and when I opened my eyes, I was waiting in the lift line at the bottom of the trail. I had no memory of the rest of the run, and it was like I'd been dropped there. I must have looked like a total moron taking my skis off looking at my legs and arms as if I had grown them. There wasn't a bruise, scraper mark on me that hadn't already been there, but somehow I was sure I'd hit a tree face had hit a tree face on topping speeds of fifty miles per hour. When my friend came down from the trail and I asked him, Did you follow me down that run? Did you see me crash? He just looked at me like I was insane. All he said was, I lost track of you once you went into the tree line and didn't bother keeping up because you love to go fast. Once I got on the chair, the lift operator told me I looked pretty visibly shaken and asked if he needed to call ski patrol. I told him, no thanks, the universe doesn't make sense anymore, but you don't even have to slow down the lift. (laughs) All in my second glitch in the Matrix while skiing. Did I get a glimpse of another timeline which I died in the collision? Can anyone tell me more definitely what happened? Thanks. Um, First first comment is, yours is the most interesting story. You actually experience what happens when you respawn in a new timeline. The whiteness of electricity makes so much sense, like breaking through the fourth wall. That is some crazy stuff right there. Um, if you guys can, go ahead and uh, any of our Patreon supporters, leave me comments on what you'd like me to talk about. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me talk. I'll go through the housekeeping. But I want to let you guys know you can throw topics at me to go and research and figure out on here. And I would love to discuss them with you. And I'd love to put them on Unstructured every Tuesday. So let me know any comments you have towards the stories I've been posting or what more you'd like to hear or if it's something that I'm not sure about because knowledge is power and I feel energized and I know that was corny but still let's go to housekeeping you can find me on twitter at randomgerm101 but I would much prefer you give a follow to at the nerdcores underscore and a little secret I post a lot there because Raul sucks when it comes to social media I'm just letting you guys know Anyways, at the Nerdcores underscore, go follow that, which hosts this show and other great shows 
such as the Ladies of Nerd Cores and the Impaired Files. And y- y'all go uh, shout out Raul, who needs to get on the Impaired Files because he missed last week. Yeah, yeah. I- I- I'm throwing the bus at you, Raul. Running right over you and backing up. Follow us on Instagram at the Nerd Cores, and you can find all this information and more at our new website, www.thenerdcores.com, where we even have blog posts. Yes, so many blog posts. Uh, I think Ro is going to post up a written review of The Lighthouse, hopefully a non-spoiler. You can go to our YouTube, just search The Nerd Cores, where he actually has a video review of it. Uh, so we're actually using everything now instead of just using the podcast platform. So go ahead, check out the videos. Uh, I think all the Nerdy Chicano episodes are up now on YouTube, except for the newest. So be sure, just uh, basically just go ahead and click play and listen to all 46 episodes, which took forever to load. You are welcome. If you'd like to catch episodes on the Nerd Course podcast feed early or even get some extra goodies, be sure to sign up on our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash the Nerd Course. With tiers starting as low as $1, you can help support this show and all the other shows. Also, we don't really go by money here at the Nerd Cores. On goal setting, we go by the number of people. So if you donate a dollar and we get 20 people that donate a dollar, you will still get what we have planned at the $20 tier, which is Luis shaving his head, me shaving my beard, everyone being thrilled. But thank you all for getting us to 10 Patreon supporters because we get to do the comic book club. I'm excited. So hopefully you don't lose any because Raul's being a stickler. He's like, I don't want that. But you got us to 10. I really want to do the comic book club, so thank you all. Uh, be sure to follow our executive producers, Grayson Barker, a.k.a. at WarlordHitman98 on Twitter, and our friend Shane at twitch.tv slash SWRKK, or follow his Twitter at SWRKK Twitch. If you'd like to hear more from me, you can find me on the Nerd Cores, the Gamer Cores, Coasts. I was on the Nerdy Chicano show last week. You can check me out there. I'm on the live show pretty much every week. So check me out there. Roll is thinking of doing some weird Friday stuff that I might not be on, but we'll let you know. Thank you all for listening. Thank you to all those who catch every episode. Thank you to all those who have just tuned in listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed me talking about quantum immortality and the will of parallel dimensions. I know that's a lot for your brain to digest and go, Brad, what are you talking about? But this is what happens when I have access to the internet and time. Anyways, thank you guys. And Young Yoda out.